broad stripes and bright stars to the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rang loud, the bombs bursting in. And good evening, all. Thanks so much for being with us here for our big Overwatch game. We are playing the University of Alabama tonight, so should be a good matchup for the Faulkner Eagles. And really looking forward to seeing what the Overwatch team does here. As I've said time and time again, these guys probably put in more practice than any team we have here on the eSports team. Really proud of the growth that they've shown this year and uh, what they have been able to accomplish. And uh, you've just seen incredible growth. We actually just had a couple of our guys make platinum rank in the competitive league. So they are really shaping up and doing the best that they can to improve their gameplay. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump straight to our player introductions for this evening before we get our game started. So uh, you'll see right there that we've got uh, over there on the far left, that is going to be Wayne, uh, otherwise known as Oracle. Or he may actually be playing Eternal. I'm not sure which handle. He actually has two different handles, Eternal and Oracle, that he plays. And so I'm not sure which one he'll be using tonight. But it'll be one of those two. Usually it's Oracle. Uh, then next to him, we've got uh, Zidane, or sorry, Zane uh, Spong is his moniker. And then over there to the far right is one of our support healers. That's going to be uh, Jesse or Shadow4. And then over on the other side... You'll see on the far right, we've got the captain. That's going to be Trey Parker, otherwise known as Viva. And then over there to the left, we have Ian McFarlane, or IND. So, uh, got all the guys here and ready to go this evening. And hopefully we're going to be getting underway here in a second. It looks like they've already got a lobby fixed, and they're already going to be jumping into the game here very quickly. So, shouldn't be very long before uh, we have them in-game. Uh, this evening uh, so hopefully we'll be able to finish uh, finish up here in just a second but really looking forward to this game it's been a really fun ride this year and this is going to be one of our last games of the season actually it's our next to last game so uh, you know really hope that they have a good showing this evening and I know the guys are excited to be playing an in-state rival we don't actually because of the nature of our particular uh, sport we actually play a lot of out-of-state games we don't play that many colleges here in the state of Alabama and so it's really cool to be able to play um, uh, to play an in-state rival here tonight and it looks like we're going to go ahead and be underway here in just a second we are going to be attacking first this evening so that'll be fun and it looks like they are uh, already the ready direction. to go here so uh, we will be playing here in just a minute they've just unlocked and so they're up oh uh oh we've got a we've got an issue here um i tell you what brandon just go ahead and go straight to uh one of the pcs and uh we'll set that up in the background uh so we will have that here in just a moment um but we can go ahead and just kind of try to get that set up here in the background while you guys are watching Sorry, we had a little bit of a technical issue. This is what happens when you have double headers like this when you're trying to be back to back. Coalescing. 
essence is almost ready. Together it strikes him down. There in my way. Stand behind me, friends. So we should have it up and running now. Let's go ahead and switch. And very quickly, Bok, um, oh, we'll, we'll have to switch it. Hey there, Moira. How have you been? Busier than you, I'd assume. <laughs> Missed you yeah. too. Okay, so we should be up and running now. Um, like looks like we've got everybody in the right spot and uh, should be running at peak efficiency <laughs> for once. So here we go. The round's about to start. And Alabama with an early lead on Faulkner, 1 0. So they're going to try to slip in here and take point. So this is one of the ones where it's actually just a straight up point battle. Clean, simple, just want to get the other guys off the point as quick as you can. There's no attacking or defending, it's just both sides going for it. Uh, very, very straightforward. And um, Oracle right here in a little bit of trouble playing D.Va. He usually doesn't play D.Va, but I guess they felt that this was a good matchup here. And uh, Shadow getting a save here on Spong, who's playing as McCree. And it looks like that Farah got him, sort of came up behind him there. And Alabama has slowly started to take point. Spong yeah, is down, but the rest of the guys are up, and so they should be mounting an offensive here pretty quickly. I don't know if they're just... Yeah, uh, they're, they're out of spawn now. Okay. And Oracle's going to come in, try to create a little chaos. And Oracle in real trouble now and in need of some healing, but Moira yeah. is there behind him to help him out. Uh, but loses loses his mech here. And so Oracle and Spong are both down. And Alabama has the advantage here. Still able to gain some on, on point, not able to 
really mount a powerful offensive here as Viva playing as Reaper is trying to figure out what's the best way to go, what route to take, and is actually able to get on point and starts capturing. So uh, while everybody else is fighting, uh, he actually slips around the back lines and is able to make a difference. So can he take out this tracer uh, and give himself control? No, not able to do so, but it, at the very least stops the bleeding, even uh, if it's momentarily. So the Faulkner team really needs to get on site here And it looks like Wayne there with the D.Va bomb tries to uh, make a big difference and does spread everybody out, but it may be too little too late. They've got three kills on them, and it looks like they've got Ham down to pretty low, but that Tracer is really good trying to uh, create a lot of chaos in the back line. And so Wayne here with the baby D.Va. It'd be really nice to get that mech back right about now. Woo! And they're trying to keep him alive because of that. And so, oh. oh, man. Takes him out right as the mech is about to pop. And that may be it for Faulkner this round. They go into overtime, but they have got to get on point right away. And not able to do it. So Alabama takes round one. Remember, this is a best of five, so this isn't ball game. They do still have to win two more games in order to defeat the Eagles. But you can see there, for a number of reasons, there's just all kinds of issues that are caused by that. Um, all kinds of problems that they, they saw there with uh, the uh, Alabama having a really good night with being able to prioritize certain targets. You notice how they had the foresight and the ability to go, sort of take on uh, the right targets at the right times. You saw them eliminate the D.Va right before the end. You saw that uh, even though Trey kind of slipped around the back lines with Reaper, uh, they were able to get Tracer in there and be able to take him down before he was able to start making his own progress on point. And so you can just see from a number of different perspectives how they were able to overtake him on that. So, uh, it looks like they've already started the, oh, I think they're doing warm-ups right now. So, yeah, they're, they're just, they're just kind of warming up at the moment. Nothing to really worry about there. So, yeah, so a disappointing outing for the Eagles, and it really just comes down to the other team was able to take early advantage and they were never able to really come back. Uh, Overwatch, as far as game momentum goes, is kind of like basketball in the sense that uh, there are certainly things to be said about teams that can kind of just sort of hang in there just enough to where they can make a rush and a rally at the end. Uh, but in uh, most cases, you're going to want to establish dominance early and just keep that momentum rolling all game if you can. And that tends to be what wins more games. And the same thing is true in a lot of the modes for Overwatch, especially that one. I would say it's a little less true with Pushbot. Like, you can, um, I would say that comebacks are actually a little more favorable with Pushback, uh, with the Pushbot, just generally speaking. Uh, there's some truth to that being uh, with payloads. But in a regular, just straight up take point, it's just so much better to get that early lead and have to hang on to it than to try to make the comeback. It's just, it, it works so much better. So, interesting selection. They've made a changeup here with Spawn playing as Bastion. And Bastion going to be coming in strong with some offensive firepower here. And trying to push forward. So, this is one of those where you have to take point and then you have to push a payload. And so, uh, the Eagles already having some issues there, uh, not able to really uh, capitalize uh, based on that. By the way, Brandon, if you uh, if you press B there, you should be able to get back the, the spectator mode. Um, 
Oh, maybe it's just my feed then. I'm only seeing one player. Oh, I see, I see. So we're... Oh, I, I see what the issue is. We're actually just um, viewing from Faulkner's vantage point as opposed to the neutral vantage point. And I'm not actually sure how to fix that. So yeah, that should actually be reversed in this round. Yep. Because cause you see how Faulkner's in blue this time? Yeah, I think there's a way to go back to that neutral one, though. Um, I think if you press B, you should be able to open up the settings. But maybe I'm wrong on that. I don't know. Huh. Well, that's a failing on my part to not know the, uh, the settings for how to change the overwatch uh, spectator there but Kiriko having some trouble there so I'm not sure what they're going to try to do here but they're running out of time they only have a minute 40 left to be able to take point and get that payroll uh, that payload rolling So, gonna use Fire Strike there. So, Viva gets pale. Uh, but unfortunately, our Bastion and our Reaper are both taken out. Oh, and they take down Oracle too. So, without a tank, really difficult to take point there. We're going to see Shadow kind of slip in here. And a couple fire strikes trying to take out the Winston. He's going to just swing around here. And get put to sleep. Reaper there at about half HP fleeing from the Genji and Genji winds up getting him. So now we're going to see Oracle comes in and charges but is quickly eliminated when he gets a little too far out. Winds up getting on point and unfortunately not able to take point we're able to make it to overtime, but that's about it. And so, on this round, Faulkner not able to unlock the point. So, basically, they're going to have to keep them from taking point. If they even take point, that's going to be this round for the Crimson Tide. Really would like to see the Eagles make a stronger showing here. But, you know, doing the best that they can and just were given a lot of grief, especially by that Genji. Um, the Kiriko that they had wasn't nearly as effective as I, uh, a change as I think they thought it would be. Uh, having the Bastion, unfortunately Bastion kept getting destroyed very early on. And so um, I think what, again, we're seeing is just like in the last match, they're very good at targeting. And so because of that, you know, Wayne didn't die all that often and was able to stay on stage quite a bit. He, he only died really when he rushed into point to try to get on point to buy them some time. So that was when he was facing three or four people at once. But it's because they're so good at targeting very specific members of the party and, uh, you know, the Faulkner team having a hard time really countering that. So we'll see how they do in this next round. This time they're going to be defending the same point that they were taking last time. And it looks like as far as roster goes, we've got Viva playing as May this time. And we've added a Brigitte. And Oracle will be playing again as D.Va, which is a little surprising. I, I kind of felt like that's not a tank he plays too often. And since he didn't have a ton of success with D.Va, it's kind of surprising that he goes back to that one. But, you know, maybe they've uh, figured out a strategy that they think will work. 
and very quickly the mech goes down and baby diva is eliminated as well so you've got spong here he's trying to make some distance and gets gets one of theirs gets logo um but gets the orb of discord and is quickly taken down as well so now viva playing echo uh but it looks like the other team is able to take point and that's going to be round for alabama so the score now with a, a score of two nothing uh, Alabama was able to take that one fairly quickly. Uh, it really is a shame they were able to make so much distance, and Wayne was having some trouble with Diva being able to really take back uh, any ground from them. And so you hate to see that, but that's kind of what happened there. Um, it looks like they're going to be making some roster changes again, and they're going to go ahead and jump into the next game here in just a second. I think they're still picking their characters, though. Uh, it will be interesting to see what they do differently. Since they've gotten really good at targeting specific characters, it may be smarter for them to go with characters that tend to be a little bit more hardy on their own, that don't rely on teamwork quite as much. And uh, there's a few characters that are like that. Um, generally speaking, this team does better with the team uh, teamwork characters, as far as I can tell but they may want to forego a little bit of that just to have characters that are a little more self-sufficient and don't have to have all those moving parts to work efficiently as a team. And you may see that coming up here in just a minute. Uh, but yeah, with them, they had the Moira, which did extremely well in that last match. Uh, really good at figuring out which character needed um, to be sort of debuffed and taken out. Uh, you just had overall a, a really good effort by the other team. So hopefully Faulkner can figure out a way to counter that here in this next round. It looks like they've gone ahead and gotten the next one set up, and they're going to be attacking in the first uh, half of this round, which will be interesting. And it looks like we've got an Ana, uh, a Echo, a Reinhardt. So Wayne's going back to one of his mains, uh, same for Shadow, just kind of going with the character that he's most comfortable with, um, not trying to think too hard about the counter pick. And then uh, Brigitte, which is one that I've definitely seen Ian play, but I wouldn't say it's one of his more common ones. And then it looks like we got Viva as a, or a Spunk as a Junkrat, which will be really interesting. All right, though, kind of hanging out here on the edges, wanting to show a united front when they're attacking and it looks like their tracer is doing a really good job of sort of just skipping around the battlefield and uh, giving Trey a hard time breaking through here so it looks like they're going to try to flank and nope I think they may may have been I think the idea there may have been they were going to fake a flank and then move around and so they get the first kill they get logo so the Tracer is down. And now Trey going to go for their Sniper. Excellent. So they take the Sniper out. So with Echo, they've done really well on um, making this first push on the payload. Now they have a Brigitte, so they're going to have to figure out a way to counter that. And Echo going to be flying around here, going to give some distance. Oh, and the Tracer comes in and takes him out. So they kind of pincer him with a t uh, 2v1 configuration there. And here we have Junkrat. Junkrat trying to clear out the enemy team from above. Just kind of taking a weird uh, sniper Junkrat take on it. But I mean, it's working for them so far. But gets, ev uh, gets eventually eliminated by the Tracer. And Wayne, interestingly enough, their team decided to switch to Echo 2. So he's having to really guard on two fronts, trying to guard straight forward and guard from the air, which becomes a problem. Any of those flying characters, I, I will tell you from experience, since I usually main Reinhardt, any of those flying characters is a real pain to have to worry about shield positioning because you'd have shots coming from straight on, you'd have shots coming from above, 
becomes a real problem. And it looks like right there he gets eliminated by Peleth, um, the Zenyatta there. Now it looks like several of our guys have ult. And so they're going to try to slip in here and make some noise. Alright, so Alright, so now making a push on the payload again. That Zenyatta is really the only thing left and because Wayne has that orb of discord stuck on him, he's having some issues really pushing back on it. All right, so goes in swinging. And they're almost able to make it to the first checkpoint, but they only have 20 seconds, so they better hustle. 15. 12. All right, so Wayne might need to use the boost here, Wayne. Nope. Decides to go in for a flank. Pins down the ham. And can he get on point? He has got on point, so he preserves overtime for a little bit longer, but he's not going to be able to hold out long at this rate. Going to have to be able to stay on point, and very quickly his HP goes down, and that is probably going to be game unless they can mount something miraculous here. Nope. Uh, not able to get to checkpoint one, so that means that Alabama is going to have a very favorable matchup in their next round, seeing how far they can get the payload. So. Uh, not a great showing for the Eagles, but way better than the previous round that they did. They were able to get the payload much further, almost made it all the way to the first checkpoint, and that is going to give them a little more breathing room than they had in the last round. You remember how quickly that was over? That was because the Alabama team, to their credit, uh, did a favorable job and, and did a very good job of being able to take point quickly, but the thing is they had all of that time to take point, and as soon as they took point, because the Faulkner team didn't take point in their round, they were going to be good to go. Now Faulkner has a little more breathing room and to be able to keep Alabama away, which is good because this is going to be match point. So they're going to have to be to keep them from getting the same amount of distance that they did in the last round. And so we're going to see how well that's going to happen. It looks like they've already set up their room and uh, they're about to prepare their defenses. They've got 20 seconds left on the clock. So let's see where they set up here. So they've switched to May for Viva, which is one of his old, uh, it's, May's almost the comfort food of characters for him. He likes to go back to it. And then, uh, is that a Pharah that they've got? Nope. So they, they've got a Roadhog here, and it looks like they're trying to take out this Echo who's flying above them right now. And they've got the Hammond who had given them a lot of trouble in previous matches. So... So you'll see that glowing yellow area. That's the point that Alabama has to reach in order to win the game because that's how far Faulkner went in the last round. So it's just that you have to do at least as good or better than the other team, which does help eliminate tiebreakers most of the time. All right, you can see Alabama already pushing the payload. Faulkner going to have to do something drastic here to keep them off of point. And Junkrat going to come in, going to try to stop that, but isn't able to get there quite in time. And that's going to be a defeat for the Eagles in this round. Man, really unfortunate to see that. They just kind of got uh, one of their teammates taken out, and from then it was just a snowball effect downhill. Uh, looks like the Doomfist... Yeah, comes in... Is able to take it yeah so that was play of the game 
And so that's going to be it for this one. Unfortunately, Faulkner goes down 3 nothing in the first round against Alabama. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break here and we'll come back with the post-game show in just a minute. Did you know that 100% of Faulkner's computer science graduates since 2014 have found jobs in their fields within six months of graduating? It's a great time to be a computer scientist. Everyone is walking around with a computer in their pocket in the form of a smartphone. And it takes software developers to make those things work. I built church websites and through the training and instruction that I received from Faulkner, I was able to go right into my career after graduation. It laid a solid foundation for what you need to know. I'm getting a lot of hands-on experience within my field and also they're just giving me a wide variety of options of things that I might want to pursue in the future. In the state of Alabama alone, there are over 4,000 tech-related jobs available. And the preparation that you receive at Faulkner University will allow you to go to work almost anywhere as a software developer. It's a great time to be a Faulkner Eagle, and it's a great time to be a computer scientist. I hope you'll come and join us. Nobody can hear you. Oh, oh, that would be a yeah. Some hang on. Y'all can probably hear me. Are you sure it's on mine? mine oh, it's it's battery. That's the issue. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully my battery will stay alive long enough to do this interview. Uh, we will see. I actually had a new uh, thing of batteries delivered today, and I was not able to get them. So um, they're stuck in the mailroom until Monday. Uh, but we are here for the post game show after our game against Alabama in Overwatch 2. And we're here with the captain of the team, Trey Parker. So, uh, Trey did want to ask you a couple questions about some of the stuff that was going on in the game. First of all, and I thought that this was um, uh, seemed like it was an issue for you. It seemed like the other team was really good at targeting specific characters. So, um, you know, a lot of teams will take sort of an all-out approach to where they're just trying to, like, uh, sort of get a feel for it and then see what uh, character... Whoa. Uh, <laughs> see what character that they need to target. But it really felt like in, um, uh, in your game, one of the big issues that kept happening over and over and over and over again was that they kept figuring out the specific person on the team they needed to get rid of and then were able to take out the rest of the team subsequently. Yeah, so that's something that I've um, kind of noticed throughout that game too. Mm -hmm. That was actually something I was going to go in there and talk about with them after the game. But um, something you'll kind of see as you go into higher levels of Overwatch, it's, it's structured in a ranking system of bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, and then different levels of master and grandmaster that I don't remember off the top of my head. Right. But, you know, in lower levels like bronze and silver, you're going to have a pretty 
simple attack model of just two teams like going head on but in higher levels teams know how to strategize and especially in like grandmaster levels they're pretty quick to pick up on different team changes and team comps and right. single out who you like need to take out um the biggest backbone of your team being your support players that give you a tactical advantage rather than just raw strength or dexterity so being able to take out the people keeping our heavy hitters um, alive, usually the quickest way to dismantle our team structure, which is something that you kept seeing as we went to each new round. Yeah, and that was one thing that I noticed too, because it seemed like uh, when Wayne was Reinhardt, they kind of left him alone. Yes. And they were kind of targeting your back lines. But when he switched to D.Va, they took him out very quickly. And so it just depended on what he was playing. And then I also noticed that uh, Jesse, who I actually thought, you know, despite the outcome, had a pretty decent game. Like, he, he was getting a lot of saves and that kind of thing, but at the same time, uh, they kept slipping into the back lines to take care of him pretty quickly when he was on a. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it just seemed like they were able to figure out exactly what piece of the puzzle they needed to take down, and once that happened, they were able to sort of spread out and get the rest of you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, particularly with... Um characters like Anna and Diva. Uh well maybe not so much Diva, particularly Anna, but I'll I'll lump Diva into the mix. There's a lot of heroes that have abilities that can really give them the movement and survivability. Um we actually on our comms the last match um Ian had gone Bri uh how do you say her name? Brigitte? Brigitte? Brigitte. Yeah, however you say it. Um We know who you're talking about. Yeah. He um he went Brigitte because her shield gave her the survivability to managed with that widow that they had um right. in the second match and in the third one widow being able to stay at a really long range behind the fight and just pick heads off um ian went brigitte to have the shield which would give him enough time to be able to if not survive an attack be aware of well, survive but if not deal with it then be able to leave it right. um with characters like anna and diva anna is low health and low mobility her only real defense against people getting in the back line is her sleep dart, but it's a, it's a one-time thing, and it's on a 12-second cooldown. So Right, which is a fairly long cooldown yes. in Overwatch. Not and, many have one that long. Mm, no. And then, you know, she has her biotic grenade, but that's more of a momentary save than to be able to disengage a fight. Um, right. Compared to characters like Moira, uh, Lucio... Kariko, they all have movement abilities that they can use to distance themselves quickly and efficiently. So being able to kind of pick heroes that have that edge can give you the survivability you need to then help your team survive. So that's something that I think we're going to kind of discuss more is team composition and knowing who to pick and when, which is always something that you need to consider in Overwatch, but I've noticed that's a trend as well. So well, I noticed in, I believe it was that last round, one of the things that uh, seemed to be indication that you guys had started to figure some things out is that I noticed that you switched to Echo mm -hmm. and had a lot of success early on. In fact, I think you took out two of their guys very early and were able to get that payload moving. Yes. Um, but it seemed like they were able to counter that pretty quickly. So what exactly did they do? And, and maybe, like, in retrospect, what was something that y'all could have done a little bit differently to make sure that that counter didn't work? Mm -hmm. So if I can remember correctly, after I had taken them out with Echo and we got the push going, they had countered with Echo, and I think a McCree. I might be wrong, but I do remember the Echo. And in that response, I switched to McCree because this season he has a very high... Um, is a he has a, he can shoot much further without damage dropping off of his um, bullets, mm -hmm. so he's pretty good at dealing with sky units like Farah, Echo, Mercy. But I also went Echo. Well, I don't know if I want to say it to give everything away, but yeah, you don't um, have to if you don't want to. There's there were certain parts of that fight that made me switch to Echo because she's a glass cannon. She can be taken out quickly, but part of her um, main gameplay is her mobility. She gets her flight and her dash back super quickly, and then she outputs a lot of damage with her sticky grenades mm -hmm. and her beam, which if you don't know can do uh, I think if a hero is over 50 health, then it does 50 damage a second, but once they're under half health, it does 200. So it's a finisher, which is why right. I was 
probably the one getting more eliminations is because I was able to finish fights off that people had initiated. Right, that makes sense. All right, well, thank you so much for mm -hmm. being willing to be with us and give us a little bit of insight into that. Uh, that, of course, is the captain of the Overwatch team, Trey Parker. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Always a pleasure to be here. And uh, just to let everybody know, we do have several games coming up next week. This is, of course, because it's late on a Friday night. Uh, this is a late game for us, but we will be having more games coming up on Monday, and that is going to take place at 6 p.m. for the blue team, and that's going to be against uh, Bened uh, Benedictine, I think is the way to say it, University. Um, never heard of them before, but you know that means that they're a new opponent for us. Hopefully I'll be able to pronounce their name by the time that game actually starts. A lot of hyphens. Yeah. Well, I actually added those. That's spelled oh, phonetically. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, for those of you who don't know, pro tip, uh, when you're writing out a very difficult word on a, uh, a script for broadcasting, you actually want to add hyphens and spell it phonetically. Mm -hmm. So that I actually changed the spelling a little bit there too. Um, but anyway, so if you ever go into broadcasting, remember that. Uh, but anyway, that is uh, Benedictine University, and that's going to be at 6 p.m. for the Rocket League blue team. And then Rocket League white team, which actually Trey sometimes plays on as an alternate, uh, played on a uh, game last week, didn't you? Yes, very yes. rusty. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, we're, we're working on that. Um, Rocket League White is actually going to have a double header next week. They're going to play Akron at 7 and then Florida International at 7.30. So we have a very full schedule for next week. going to be a lot of teams playing, and we look forward to having you with us. Of course, remember to like and subscribe if you're watching this program. That always helps us and helps show your support for us here at Faulkner University. Thank you so much for being with us. That's going to be it for us tonight, and we're going to call it. A uh, big sp special thanks to our producer, Brandon Dishman, who stuck around even after his CSGO game to help us out, pushing all the right buttons and making sure we stayed on the air, which was a Herculean task, especially considering how little setup time we had tonight because we had that quick transition from the CSGO game. So a big thank you to him for that, and also a thanks to all of our FSN uh, crew that helps us with stuff like that on a regular basis. That's going to be it for us this evening. We'll be back again for, at Monday at 6 for our game against uh, Benedictine University for the Faulkner Rocket League Blue Team. So be sure to check that out. And in the meantime, stay the course, friends. The preceding broadcast was an official presentation of Faulkner University. It may not be redistributed without the express written consent of the Faulkner University Athletic Department. Regitar USA High Res Arena is sponsored by Regitar USA. The National Anthem was performed by the Faulkner University Chorus. If you would like to learn more about the Faulkner Esports program, visit our official website at faulknereagles.com or follow us on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram for all the latest news and events. Thank you for watching, and soar eagles!